Warriors! Let's go! Happy Friday, or you might be watching this in future. Happy, beautiful day. My name is Coach JV. I am the top health and mindset coach in the world. What you believe in your heart, you think in your mind, will eventually become your words and become your reality. I'm sure you can finish my sentences every single time now. Now, why is that important? What you repeatedly do gets ingrained in your subconscious mind. What gets ingrained in your subconscious mind becomes an unconscious activity. You are the culmination of all the thoughts, actions, and behaviors from the past. So if you want to radically change your future, you need to change your activities and behaviors right now within this moment. And once you change that activity and behavior, you need to repeat it over and over and over and over again until it becomes an unconscious activity. Now, I may repeat the same things over and over again, but it's by design, and that's what They've been doing to you for a long time. As you look this way at a narrative, there's a whole other narrative happening this way. You've been preemptive programmed for a very long time to think that the way that you do. To be just over broke, to be stuck in a job, to be dying for the weekend. And once you get to the weekend, Sunday comes around and your stomach starts to get sick. And then you're starting to complain about Monday and you start this repetitive cycle. You go to an eight-hour job. You get two 15-minute breaks and a lunch break. That's how your school system was designed. They've groomed you a very long time to think this way, Warriors. So don't get stressed out and don't freak out when it feels very uncomfortable for you to work towards freedom. Like I said, my name is Coach JV. I am the top health and mindset coach in the world. What you believe in your heart, you think in your mind will eventually become your words and become your reality. I've been saying that for a very long time. I just repeat it again. I've said it in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of my podcasts, the Coach JV podcast. And guess what? It doesn't matter if there's a ranking. If I believe it here, it is truth. But you came here to learn about cryptocurrency and what's going on within the space. Now, I'm the guy that gives you a little bit of a different angle, and I'm asking you not to believe a word I say. If you give a man or woman a fish, they eat for a day. If you give them a fishing pole, they eat for a lifetime. If you teach them how to farm, like my boy William says, they will feed a nation. Now, today I'm going to break down a couple videos uh, from Jerome Powell, our buddy Jerome Powell. Uh, he looks like he's getting pretty stressed out there and interesting. Uh, it'd be interesting to be in his position. He has a lot of pressure. Okay. I'm going to break down the virtual hearing, two different things. Um, and then I'm going to break down the central bank digital currency. I'm going to break down our new um, SEC chair coming in on March 2nd. And I really want to break down, and the new XRP exciting news. I'm sure you guys have seen it out there, but I want to break this stuff down for you. And I want to explain to you guys how important these things that are happening are for retail adoption. And I want to let you know that you are very, very early right now. Okay, but you do not want to miss the biggest shifts in generational wealth. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just someone who documents my journey into the quantum financial system. And I plan on being very, very wealthy so I can bring the money back to the people. So I can teach people that free dome, free your dome, right? Freedom is already yours. So let's get right into it. So we're going to watch the virtual hearing. We're going to watch this piece where he talks about the digital dollar and, and presses him a little bit on that. We're going to watch another piece in the digital dollar, or excuse me, virtual hearing, where they talk about Bitcoin. And then I'm going to break down the U.S. central banks, what they're doing. Gary Glensler. So listen for keywords. Listen for keywords. Okay. And then we're going to break down the digital dollar project, the digital euro. Already the uh, digital yuan is already being tested. So where is the... Just so you know, like you, those of you who are like talking to your grandma or talking to your mom and dad or you're, or you're a mom and dad who's like, cryptocurrency is a fraud. Just so you know, guys, your banks can already custody cryptocurrency. Three of the largest banks in the world, Bank of America has the most cryptocurrency patents. JP Morgan already has their own cryptocurrency and cryptocurrency blockchain format where they can build companies just like Ethereum type blockchain. And also, also Wells Fargo invested $5 million into a blockchain company last year. So your banks are already involved, just so you know. Some bankers don't even know their banks are involved, but they don't tell you warriors. They have you looking this way, problem, reaction, the hero comes up with the solution. I've been training warriors' brains for about three years, okay? So let's jump right into this. So this is a digital hearing. Uh, we're going to listen for keywords, and I'll narrate this. Okay. So to your pal, yesterday you also spoke about the digital dollar being a high priority for the Fed. I think this is a national security issue, an economic security issue for sure. You said you're committed to transparency as you look into the digital dollar. I think that's important. I think that's very important for our system of government. Uh, I think it's a very uh, important thing for an open society. But let's get into a few specifics on that if we can. Uh, what can the public expect in terms of learning the details of this project going <coughs> forward? And are some, uh, some more details, uh, are you able to share with us 
today, uh, what we can expect from the Fed in this year, uh, over the, the course of this year uh, with the digital dollar project. This is important. This year was digital adoptions coming fast, like 10 years got crunched into one year. Project. Yeah, so this is going to be an important year, and this is going to, going to be the year in which we uh, engage with the public pretty actively. Okay. Very important. This is going to be an important year. What happened last year, Wars? I can't say it because they'll shadow ban me, right? So last year, 2020, you were looking at a, a C word this way, whole another narrative going on this way. The 640, 34 richest people could became very much wealthier, and that was in the tech industry, okay? You were forced to use your phone. You were forced to go to school at home. You were forced to use Zoom calls. I've done more damn Zoom calls in my life in the past six months. We took our business online. It exploded. So this is an important year, Warriors. Digital adoption is here. Including some public events that we're working on, which I'm not going to announce today, but there are things that we're working on. And it's the sense of this is not, here are the decisions we've made, what do you guys think? It's going to be- well, Here's an important narrative. They're going to make the public think that we're getting, they're getting our opinion. It's problem. We created a problem. We get a reaction out of you. And then we make you think that we're helping you. Uh, we're let, making you part of the solution. So they're, so they're going to make you part of the digital dollar project, which I'm going to break down for you. And it makes you feel like, yeah, we're making the decision. You're already using your phone. You're already used to the digital. It just makes us feel like it's for us. The, <clears throat> these are the trade-offs. These are the, they're both policy questions. And there are technical questions that interrelate between those two, and they're, they're very uh, challenging questions. And, and so we, we're going to want to have a public dialogue about that with all of the interested constituencies. And, and that, is, that is the idea of what we're doing. In the meantime, we're working on the technical challenges and also collaborating with and, and sharing work with the other central banks around the world who are doing this. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, in the meantime, we're already collaborating. We're building this shit out. This shit just doesn't magically happen because your opinion comes through. Think about that. Oh, we got your opinion now. Let's launch it. They're already working with the EU, the European Union, probably the digital yuan. Yeah, there's this narrative that we're against China, right? There's other countries already running on it. They are working to build this thing. That's already built out. Look at the Fed now wallet warriors. And, you know, we will need... Um it, depending on what we do, we could well need uh, legislative authorization for such a thing. That, that hasn't uh, isn't clear until we until we see which way we're going. But so we will be engaging significantly with with you and your colleagues on Capitol Hill as well. Okay, so, I, okay awesome, cool. Let's go now. Let's watch this part of it. And really, uh, want to commend the Federal Reserve for the work that was done at the end of March to provide liquidity and stability to our economy, to deal with the massive surge in demand for U.S. dollars. And uh, we're just so grateful that the U.S. dollar has become the world's reserve currency in a time of crisis, not just Americans, but people all around the world want our dollar. It is indeed a source of our strength as a country is to have a, a strong dollar uh, that has become the world's reserve currency. It does great things for our capital markets and frankly helps enable uh, the deficit spending that we've continued to do uh, because we certainly haven't saved for bad times. We're able to navigate them because we still can borrow. Um, it's I really important. I know I went over this yesterday, but we haven't saved for hard. We have, we're, we have zero savings. We literally just have to print more money. You're in a freaking Printing machine wars. I wonder, sir, do you have a definition of sound money? We target uh, inflation that averages 2% over time. That is, that is what we consider to be. Well, that's a policy, but I mean, when you think of sound money, what would- Look at the stress on his face, watch. What would you say constitutes sound money? Well, the, the public has confidence in the currency, which they do, which the world does. Uh, that's that's really what it comes down to. That people believe that that the United States currency is is um, perfectly reliable and and stable in value. That people believe believe keyword listen that we believe that it's perfectly reliable and stable. If we keep printing it, keep giving you stimulus checks. You're going to believe that because you don't know economics. You weren't taught economics. You're taught to be a worker. Okay, so as a store of value, uh, it clearly isn't stable in value. It it, it is not. Um, what is a store of value? The U.S. dollar really you just said, basically, you're lying to the people. As a store of value, it's clearly not stable. Really, is it diluted? Is as a store of value, 
uh, when M2 goes up by more than 25% in one year? Does that, does the printing of more US dollars somehow diminish the value of the dollars that others hold? You know, um, there was a time when uh, monetary aggregates were important determinants of inflation, and that has not been the case for a long time. So you'll see, if you look back, uh, the correlation between movements in different aggregates, you mentioned M2, uh, and, and inflation uh, uh, is just very, very low. And you see that now, where inflation is at 1.4% for this year, both. Uh, yeah, you keep, you keep using that, and you keep using it uh, to talk about inflation. And I don't think that's the only proxy for, you know, whether the dollar is a, is a store of value in an efficient means of exchange. It is. Uh, clearly, the still the world's reserve currency, but we're we're putting it under a pretty big stress test by diluting the value of the dollars. And I think one of the indicators of that. Is- That's important to understand what he's saying here. This gentleman's calling out Jerome Powell and saying, "Listen, you're diluting it. You're you're making it sound like we have sound money. You're telling the people we have sound money when we clearly don't have sound money. Your stock market is overvalued." The Warren Buffett model is extremely overvalued. So we're selling something and making it seem like our dollar is very stable. And at the same time, there's a digital dollar project on it. We're moving to a new banking system, Warriors. The car is on its way to crash. We're in that car. They jumped into another car. Is when the U.S. government issues debt, uh, all this spending that we've done as a country, um, it isn't really funded, is it? I mean... There's not a true market demand for this much debt. It's not being lent. When there's borrowing, there's actually a lender. Um, How much has the Federal Reserve had to purchase to bridge the gap between market demand for treasuries and and the actual need to finance the spending? That's that's not at all what's happening. We don't have to purchase any of this. There is we purchase it because it it is providing accommodative financial conditions and supporting the economy. in keeping with our mandate, there's plenty of demand for for U.S. Uh, Treasury paper around the world. So all of it would sell. You're competing. So are are you bidding up the price? Then is it is it your contention that you're inflating asset prices by by um, increasing this purchase? No, I, I think that all, we could sell all of our debt. That's the the reason we do it. But by the way, we issue debt when. We, we issue United States obligations in the form of reserves when we buy treasuries. So we're not actually changing the amount of obligations outstanding on the part of the treasury. What we're doing is we're substituting an overnight reserve for a treasury bill. It has no effect on the overall outstanding obligations of the United States when we do that. Right. So, uh, so the growth of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet, you don't think that has anything to do with the, the disconnect between Wall Street and Main Street or – Let's just take as an example the confidence people have expressed in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies Um, and, and, you know, well-respected proven investors like Ray Dalio, who said cash is trash. Isn't it because the U.S. dollar is being destroyed by fiscal and monetary policy? Absolutely, Warriors. Does that not like Warriors? This is so exciting. If you're still here, congratulations, because this stuff is not exciting. Most people just want to hear XRP news, Bitcoin news, and all this stuff. They want to hear how they're going to get rich. You don't get rich that way, Warriors. You get rich by doing the boring things consistently. Do what the billionaires do, not what they say, but you do that by educating yourself. So if you're still here, kudos to you. Okay, so we're going to watch this really quickly, another video, and then I'll break down a few things for you system independent from central bank or government control. But as Bitcoin's price and popularity rise, so too does innovation in central bank digital currencies. Joining me now to discuss is Jim Kuna, Senior Vice President of Secure Payments and FinTech at the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. Welcome, Jim. Great. Thanks for having me. Happy afternoon. Happy afternoon. Well, Jim, we know that the Boston Fed is working on a digital dollar in partnership with MIT. So I'm curious to understand if you think a digital dollar will exist side by side Bitcoin or will government measures eventually restrict the use of Bitcoin once a digital dollar emerges? Uh, Well, in the U.S., uh, currently, the Fed does not have the authority to limit any private digital currency. So right now, that's not even within the scope of our powers. Now, Congress could also take different steps, but I don't see any reason why there can't be a coexistence of a central bank digital currency in in many of the forms of payment, traditional payment rails in the U.S., but also uh, cryptocurrencies. It really just depends on the individual currencies 
um, and how they operate. But I see no reason that a, a lack of coexistence shouldn't exist. Perfect. That's all we need to hear, Warriors. They obviously have had this conversation before. I want you to think about right now our financial system. You have a bank account, a fiat bank account, and then our new system is very different. A fiat bank account, then you have PayPal, you have Cash App. They're working public and private sector working together. It's no different. Now you're just moving to a digital dollar, CBDC, which is very, very different than your fiat dollar, very different. They can deflate your money in your account. And then you have a store of value like Bitcoin, you have uh, you know, XRP, you have Ethereum, you have, and then you have all these cryptocurrencies and blockchains wars. So what you're investing in is the new infrastructure of the banking system, the new infrastructure of mortgages, new infrastructure of insurance, new inf infrastructure of everything wars. So you literally are an early adopter of the new financial system. Now, did you hear how they said MIT, working with MIT? Now, remember, Warriors, who is coming to run the SEC? Gary Glenser. Gary Glenser is a professor at MIT Management. MIT in 1996 was already working on cryptography. In 1996 was working on cryptography, which is cryptocurrency infrastructure or rails now. MIT has been working on this for a very long time. He's a professor of the practice of global economics and management at MIT. If you look up MIT blockchain, Gary Glenser, he teaches blockchain courses at MIT or is a former professor. I'm not sure if he's still there. I think he's still there. So he's a professor that practices global economics and management at MIT, Sloan School of Management. He is an expert in blockchain warriors and he is taking over our SEC. Are you ready? Does that make sense? It's not you're talking about it at the barber shop or, or at the bench press at the freaking local Gold's Gym and things like that. This is serious shit, Warriors. The freight train has left the building. So your friends who are saying cryptocurrency is a fraud, you might want to have them take their beeper off, take their fanny pack off, and let's roll. <laughs> All right, so here's the digital dollar, dollar project, Warriors. I'll start to speed it up a little, just a little bit. I know I'm losing some of you guys probably. Leading discussion on the U.S. Central Bank digital currency. This is a digital dollar project that Jerome Powell was talking about. The digital dollar project is a partnership between Accenture, New York Stock Exchange, ACN, the Digital Dollar Foundation to advance exploration of the United States central bank digital currency, but I thought we weren't getting into it. The purpose of the project is to encourage research and public discussion on the potential, advan the potential advantages, it's already rolling warriors, convene private sector, private sector, through uh, thought leaders and actors and propose possible models to support the public sector. The project will develop a framework for potential practices steps that can be taken to establish a dollar CBDC. Jerome Powell last year was saying we're, we're, we're a ways away from a CBDC. Remember what I taught you? Last year he was saying we're a ways away, but all of a sudden, now the conversation's starting, warriors. What they tell you is not what they're doing. The digital euro, okay, when will it be ready? We have not yet decided whether to issue a digital euro. Yes, you have. We are currently in preparation phase. We're developing the concept, conducting practical experiments, listen to the views of the, okay, do you see? Do you see that they're communicating behind the scenes, lawyers? He said, do you remember what he said? We're communicating with other countries that are already up and running. They are all communicating behind the scenes, Warriors. These things just don't happen overnight. Now, some exciting news. Boom. But XRP is a security. It's a security. But we have the new XRP XRP debit card. You can earn 5% cash back in XRP. That sounds like a currency to me, Warriors. Hmm, interesting. Join the wait list. Get up to 5% cash back. Be one of the first 1,000 signups to earn 5% cash back in XRP on your first 10,000 spent within three months, 2% after. So I'm just going to say it like this. Let's, let's read it this way. Be the first of 1,000 signups to earn 5% back on the security XRP. That makes no sense. Be the first 1,000 signups to earn 5% cash back in a currency XRP. Just my opinion. This is pretty cool. I thought this is bullish news. More on the card. Um, receive, hodl, and convert your XRP rewards in your global ID wallet powered by Uphold. You can also trade more than 100 national and digital currencies, INR, to Doge. No problem. This Doge freaking send and receive currencies to and from people you trust. Send assets anywhere. MasterCard is accepted. Visa's in the game, now MasterCard's in the game, Warriors. Let me repeat that. Visa, I showed you the video. He said, we are getting in the cryptocurrency game. We are not going to miss the boat on this. That's his words, paraphrasing. Now, MasterCard's like, hey, hey, we're getting involved. Let's go. Bank of America's connected with Ripple Wars. The freight train has left the building. The freight train has left the building. I just want you guys to get on board and go for the ride of your life. Now, you don't have to believe a word I say. You've got this long-haired hippie guy who did his hair for you today. 
I'm asking you to not trust a word I say. If you don't like what I'm saying, say what you mean down in the comments, but don't say it mean. I'm just a guy who's sharing my banking knowledge and then breaking free from the matrix, creating freedom, breaking the box, eradicating poverty within my paradigm and helping other people do the same. That's what I do. That's what I'm here for, Warriors. So that's, that's it. That's my mission. That's my purpose. I love you guys very, very much. Down below in the description is everything you need. You can join our free Facebook group. We have a Warrior Academy, a private Warrior Academy. It's over 700 Warriors, 714 Warriors right now. Uh, we have a cryptocurrency call on Thursdays. You get access to my portfolio every single time it changes. I'm not a financial advisor, not financial advice. You have access to my 120-day challenge where I take you through my mindset and how this thing works. 120 days to reprogram your subconscious mind to wealth, to health, and to abundance. That's all I got today, Warriors. You know, as we always say, Warriors rise. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, CoachJV underscore. Let's go.